right here. This is the Pelicans and the Kings, Zion Williamson. You know this man is made for the posters, for the highlight reels. Watch this right here, ladies and gentlemen. The drop, ooh, drop the lane, yeah! Ah, oh, nasty. You forgot he had those kind of hops, didn't you? 6'5", 6'6", 280, and can get up like that. Why'd you even jump? Who was that that jumped? Why would you even jump? For what? You trying to get your wrist broken? You trying to make the highlight reel for all the wrong reasons? The not top 10 list? What's wrong with you? Don't even jump next time. Don't even jump. Let's get back to something I hate to see right here. Sixes Grizzlies, fourth quarter, Ben Simmons. Now we all know he can't shoot threes, but he tried this one. Lord, that man, oh God. Uh, uh, I, I love Ben Simmons. I think that he's a jump shot away from being LeBron part two. But it's actually an insult to LeBron James to mention Ben Simmons shooting jump shots because LeBron ain't never been that bad. Not shooting James. Oh. Doc Rivers act like it's not important that he shoots threes. He doesn't need to shoot. Yes, he does. Something else I love to see. First of all, Kemba Walker's back in action. Love him. He means a lot to the Boston Celtics. But by the way, didn't mean much Sunday because they went up against the New York Knicks and they resembled a bunch of construction workers. I'm not talking about the Knicks. I'm talking about the Celtics. Shooting bricks from all over the place. Marcus Smart, brick. Kemba Walker, brick. Uh, meanwhile, the New York Knicks, Obi Toppin. Look at that dunk right there. We know he's a sky rise. I still like Tyree Talliburton. Wish the Knicks had gotten him. But Toby Hoppin, I mean, brother can play. Got hops. New York Knicks by 30 on a Sunday. I like it. I like it. By the way, I'm not finished. More of what I love to see. The New York Knicks had another game today. Martin Luther King Day. Martin Luther King Holiday. New York Knicks. Special t-shirts right there. Justice and reality for all. New York Knicks going up against the Orlando Magic. Look at this right there. These brothers can play. I like what I'm seeing from them. Quickly, 11 points in 15 minutes. Peyton, you saw what he can do right there. He had 12 points. Look at the quickly lob right there. Oh, this is nasty right here. I'm seeing something from the New York Knicks. They ended up winning against Obi Toppin. Look at this right here. New York Knicks, that's defense right there. That's Tom Thibodeau team playing defense. Put the ball up the court. Take it in. Oh, yeah. RJ oh, Barrett, I love it. I love what I'm seeing. Go ahead and give him that fist pump and keep it moving. Keep it moving. New York Knicks, 91, 84 win winners over the Orlando Magic. Seven and eight on the season. That's almost 500. That's almost 500. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a Knicks fan. We have to pray and cherish moments like this. They don't come along very, very often. When they won by 30 on Sunday, that comes along like once every decade. Work with me. I know I'm embarrassing myself right now, but I'm... They haven't won since 1973. Could you have some pity on me, please? Just a little bit, please. Knicks. Is you LeBron worthy of the Lakers? Are you? <laughs> what are you talking about? The president of the Raider Nation. Think that. Just don't play with me. That just ain't gonna happen, baby. The world is watching, but we back, man, and uh, it feels good. That's gonna be hard to beat. Ain't no way on earth I'm going to have Stephen A's world and don't have my brother on the show. He's a hip-hop icon. He's an actor, a writer, a director. He does it all. He's my brother. The one and only Ice Cube is in the house. What's going on, big time? How are you? Yay, yay. What's up? Uh, yay, yay. What's up, baby? <laughs> How you been, man? It's your How's world, going? you know. Oh, man, it's going great. It's going great. You know, uh, just looking forward to to the new year to to be something better than last year, so. No it's question. Great. Before I even get into it, let me just get this out of the way first before I come back to it later on. Are you feeling good about your Lakers because KD is in Brooklyn with Harlan now? Kyrie's coming. Are you getting a little bit nervous about your Lakers? I'm just asking. We ain't worried about nothing. You know what I mean? Won that championship last year um, and planning on going back to back. And if we got to go through Brooklyn or anybody else that step up, you know what I mean? I'm putting my money on the lake because we ain't worried about nothing. I'm going to get back to that later before I get into some other serious matters. Let me ask you a quick question about football. You did tell me that the Raiders was going to be all right this year. You did tell me that. I remember you telling me that. Ice I was there when you said it. What happened to your Raiders? Well, you know, uh, same thing always happened to us. You know, we go six and three and then the bottom fall out. So we got to fix that. Um, you know, we start off great, 
and and then the team end up eight and eight. So it's something got to be done different. You know, I, I still think we got to show up that defense and and hey, hopefully next year we can get ten and six, eleven. I mean, eleven and five. And uh, get into those playoffs. You've been hoping a long time, Cube, when it comes to the Raiders, particularly when it comes to Derek Carr. You still holding out hope on that, or have you been one of those people, or are you one of those people that has given up hope when it comes to him? You think the Raiders might need to go in a different direction. Where are you at with that? I mean, I like the quarterback. I think he, uh, you know, does a lot of things well. You know what I mean? Uh, I would love for him to maybe follow through on a couple of throws, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, not, not be so back footy with it, you know what I mean? And step into some of those throws, but for the most part, it's, it hasn't been his fault. We haven't won, you know, it's really on the other side of the ball. We just got to show up that defense because you can't expect him to score 30 points a game, uh, every game. So that's just asking too much in any quarterback. It's all on the defensive side of the ball. Let me transition off the football field because obviously this particular week is sensitive in our nations in our nation right now. We've got inauguration week. Joe Biden's about to be inserted as the president of the United States. We understand Kamala Harris is going to be obviously a vice president. We're all looking forward to that. You obviously made a lot of noise because you put together a contract with Black America that you was willing to offer to any administration that was going to be in power. And because of that, I saw you take hits that I'm going to be on the record and say this on national television. It was completely unfair. Any ideas that's going to empower black America is something I'm in support of. You took some hits for that as you've had an opportunity to reflect on all the things that have transpired this year without getting into the weeds too much about it. Talk to me about what you walked away thinking when all has been said and done. Well, I mean, there's a lot of emotions going on both sides. You know, there's a lot of you know, misinformation going on both sides. You know, if, if anybody studied what I was doing, uh, they, they'll understand that I wasn't, you know, uh, you know, rooting for any president, to be honest. You know, I just want whoever's going to help black America. No president has come through for us. So, um, you know, Trump is out of there. Uh, Biden is in. We're going to go to him and, and, and hopefully he'll be the one who uh, break this cycle of, of not doing Uh, much economically for black people in America. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, I just keep on pushing. You know, I understood that, you know, being in the middle of an election, you're going to take hits, you know, when you speak out. But I wanted to keep, you know, black uh, issues front of mind. You know, they were were falling behind. A lot of people were moving on to to suburban women votes, and I wanted uh, black issues to stay front of mind, um, and and I believe it did stay front of mind, and and I cont- I hope to continue to keep it front of mind, and and that's the goal is to make somebody do something. You know, it don't matter who's in there, somebody got to do something for this situation because we're in a dire need of uh, some economic assistance and not so much sabotage. Anybody that knows you knows that you ain't going to stop pushing because you've never stopped pushing a day in your life. Look up Ice Cube's history, and it speaks for itself. Having said that, I can't even begin to imagine. Maybe I could because I've been, I've been accused of that from time to time myself when I'm willing to tackle issues where people are willing to question our blackness, calling us sellouts and things of that nature. I know how it's hit me in the past. I, can't, I never dreamed of my wildest dreams. Anybody would ever say that about you, but they did. How did that make you feel and how did that affect you or how has that affected you and your thought process moving forward? I mean, my true ones never did, you know, um, and, you know, to me, I've always uh, felt like, you know, there's there's going to be a certain amount of people that just don't like what you do, no matter what it is. So I'm never concerned with that, that bunch or that crowd, you know, who, who's not looking at the facts, who's quick to follow, you know, the crowd, follow the herd, follow the headlines and not look at me as an individual and what I've done and what I'm doing. So not really worried about the suckers. I'm just worried about the people that's real, that want to get something done, that ain't caught up into, uh, you know, a lot of this nonsense, you know, because you throw everybody away, you're going to look up and you ain't going to have nobody uh, to throw away. You know, you're just going to have a, a, a pile of trash. So at the end of the day, you know, we got to keep pushing. And uh, everybody got to do what they think they need to do 
uh, to best help in the situation. And that's all we're doing. Everybody's doing their best to help our situation. Nobody has the answer. Nobody has the magic uh, program that's going to fix everything. Mm. Could have said it better myself. Ice Cube, let me go back onto the court of play because, again, I'm going to get back to your Lakers getting off the serious issue, getting back to the court of play. I'm going to ask you one more time. With a straight face. Yeah. With a straight Because I asked you, I had your boy Snoop on here. He didn't seem concerned either, but I spoke to him before Harden arrived in Brooklyn. You sure you're not worried at all about KD, Kyrie, and James Harden in Brooklyn possibly knocking off your Lakers? I'm going to ask a question again. I'm not worried about them knocking off the Lakers. You know, is that a great... Uh, a big three, of course, you know, it's a great team, uh, but I'm not worried about, I think we have a great team too. I think we've added some great pieces um, to ensure that we will go back to back. Mm. Snoop laughed when I asked him this question. Maybe you won't laugh in my face either. You sure you ain't worried about the Clippers? Clippers with Kawhi Leonard. And Paul John. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're not worried about the Clippers? Boy. <laughs> Nobody worry about the zippers, man. Nobody's worried about the clippers. Okay. Okay. Nobody I just worry I just, about the dippers, man. I had to check. I had to check. Listen, before I let you get on out of here, we're approaching the one year anniversary, tragically, of uh, Kobe Bryant's passing. And I put together my list because I know how I die, how a Laker fan you are. I got my top five moments on the court for Kobe Bryant, and I want you to critique them, okay? I want you to tell me. Once I give you my time, I'm going to give you one by one from five to number one, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you what your thoughts about that, right? Let's, you ready? You okay. ready? Number oh, yeah, five on it. my list, Ice Cube, when he dropped 61 at Mac